Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays and it's time for some more Minecraft Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles and my sort of headline thing for today is that I've done a bit more of the automation with the um, with the manager with the with all of the magical stuff up here right on the top of the tower so in previous episodes you'll remember I did lots and lots of automation stuff all the way down in the basement with the blood magic and now I've done a little bit up here to make things a little bit easier <clears throat> And the first step with that, of course, was to bring up the data cables up to the top of the top of the tower, which come up from here, from underneath, and then go out, and, and then I've got them un, un, well well under the earth here, which is one of the reasons I've got the, the the earth is quite this thick up here. Not the main reason. The main reason is so that um, so that water doesn't leak through. Should I need to have any pools of water anywhere? But it's been quite useful because it's given me an underground area where I can run some cables as, as I need to. Um, the only slight downside is that there isn't any anything really marking where these where these uh, underground trenches are, so they're not very obvious. But I've then run another uh, smaller cable off the side of here, which leads to this um, interface and to these two uh, crafting these two terminals here. So this now allows me to summon any any items I want from the computer system up up to here. So I can grab them out. I can do building of stuff down here as well. And also it allows me to collect any liquids I want. So if I wanted, for example, a tank, I haven't got a tank on me. But if I wanted if I wanted any any one of these fluids, for example, I needed some. Um, pyrothium or something like that up here then I could fill up a bucket or a tank or anything from one of these go off and put it where I need it or alternatively if I've, if, I, if I've taken it out of something I can put it back in here so it just makes things a bit easier and you may or may not well hopefully you remember that last time there was a stack of tanks over here with all of the various different liquids or fluids that are required for the jeweler's workshop and the major's workshop and, and they were a bit untidy in the corner so I've, that is now being got gone into here this one, oh, so yes, there's a tank, emergent, there's a convenient tank here, so I can come along to here, I can go in here, I can say, I would actually like some Molten Inferium, please, and I can fill it up like that, I've got 11, uh, 11 buckets in from one one click, um, perhaps because that was all of it, I'm not quite sure, um, and then I can then take that over, put it into whichever, whichever of these things needed it, and then also come back over here, and I believe I can get rid of it as well, like that, there we go, so it's now dumped it back into the system. So you'll remember that in the last episode we talked about how there were lots and lots of tanks down there that are storing it, and now there's even more. But I'm, that, that's not what I'm not, not really what I'm talking about at the moment. So the next thing I did was this: this is a copy of um, Al's semi-automated crafting system. Um, so so up here, what I, one of the things I wanted to build was was all of these runes because I'm getting through a lot of these, and I was getting fed up with having to go over to a crafting system and going, well, okay, for a rune of water, I need a sugar collect cane block, a mana steel ingot, a water cell, a copper ingot, a fishing rod, and some mana powder, because I could, can't hold all of that in my head at once, and there wasn't a convenient list you could you could hold up on screen while you were get while you were collecting things out of the out of the system. So you had to sort of go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, just filling your inventory up, and then go over here and dump them all into the runic altar. So a fully automated system would be where I, I go into the in, into the computer system over here and I say I would like a which which runes have we not got any of? I, I would like a rune of air please. Uh, no, no, let's, let's not do that one because Mike's made a bajillion of those. I'd like a rune of fire please and so I'd be able to say next and then the system would craft it all automatically and it would drop back in over here and there would be a rune of fire. Now we haven't gone quite that far yet at the moment the um, the ingredients will eventually end up in here but first in this chest the pulverized mana infused metal has appeared so I can take that out of there I can come over to any one of these mana pools take it out and just toss it in like that and that'll turn it into the uh, mana powder which I need and I can then put that back into the system over here it will disappear off into the computer network then if we look over here all of the things I need to make that um, whatever it was I was making the, the rune of fire have appeared okay that's got rid I've just dumped some stuff out so pick all of that up the one thing it doesn't put in there because I forgot this when I was creating all the recipes is it doesn't get me the living rock that I need for the for, for making the runes um, I remembered nearly everything I needed but I forgot one thing let's go to that dragon fruit for now there we go. So I need a living, living rock as well. So I can now, then I can come over to, over here to the runic altar, and I can put in all of the things I just grabbed out of the system. And we then see you can see you can see that it's, it's showing a diagram, of, uh, an icon of a rune of fire, and there's a green highlight going over it, showing showing it being made. It also is going to need a living rock, so I want to put this in there as well. And that's now that's all in there. We get the lightning, and I can now boop it with the wand of the forest. And it turns into that rune I, I just asked for. So I can now grab that. Then it's very important that I then come over back over here and put it into the system like so to say it's been done. And if we now go over here and we, we can look in the crafting status of everything and we'll see that there's no crafting job active at the moment. If I don't do that step, 
So if, for example, I wanted to create a, a, a rune of a rune of spring, I'll say I want to make one of those. Okay, do that. Now, if we look in here, it shows me all of the things that it's trying to do at the moment. So at the moment, it's it's got all of these things, which is quite nice. Um, it's trying to craft the mana powder, which mean which means it's which means I've told this this interface here that the way you make mana powder, um, this one is that you t you take a pulverized mana infused metal and you output it into the into the thing on the output of this interface which will then go off and do all do, do the uh, do the needful so the arrows point this way it goes into the chest and then in theory this would be a machine that would do it for me and when i have time to to update this this will actually be a pipe that comes an item duct that comes out here and has a precision dropper that will drop the drop the um the piece of mana infused metal powder into the item mana pool and then we'll have a thing that pick next to it that picks it up and puts it back into the system so this will become a bit more automated but at this stage it's not it's we've got we've got this level of semi-automation so i have to do that step of it once i've done that step it'll then be able to then carry on and try and make it, it'll then put all the bits and pieces that are needed for the rune of water into this chest i then go off and make the rune of water and then put that in put the rune of water into the system then the rune of spring will be able to be made so at the moment i've got it very very semi-automated at the moment it produces the stuff that i need and puts them in a chest for me to, for me to do the hard work of making the thing but i think this this step should be fairly easy to do and then the, the step of creating the runes is going to be a bit harder but i'm optimistic that i'm going to be able to do that at some point where at least at the very least i'm going to be able to have a thing that drops them all out onto the um onto the altar and then I then come over I look at it and see until the thing fills up with green and then I boop it with the wand and it will do the and it will make the um and it will make the rune which I can then take out and put back into the system so it'll be or maybe even ha then I have it pick it up automatically so the only only manual part is is poking it with the wand and at some point I might be able to automate the wand poking as well we shall see how that goes but, the, but those are the steps that we're going to go through the first one is going to be automating this step and that should be easy the second step is going to be putting these things onto the altar and that's going to be slightly harder but still doable and I'll go, I'm going to have to run the um, run the ducts around slightly more cleverly to do that maybe I'll um, have another mana pool underground here so this this can all happen hidden away somewhere or maybe maybe not maybe we'll just have it all all on display because it's sort of it's, it's interesting to have things visible for your automation so all of this requires mana and previously I've talked about over here we've got this system that generates mana and over here we've got a hopper we've got drawers full of the um, what is it blood waxed coal we'll put into here and when the mana pool isn't doesn't have this much mana in it it will drop coal out onto here and the endo flames will pick it up and burn it and we've also got the um, the Rosa Arcana over there which will sap my um, my XP and also turn that into mana to be picked up here however this has been a relatively slow process um, so we wanted to make that go a bit faster because the other thing I was doing in the last session was building up the terrestrial agglomeration plate and therefore being able to make terra steel this is the thing that Mike has been crying out for for about a month now so I finally managed to produce a little bit of it that has not really satisfied him because he wanted quite a lot more of it but it turns out even when you've got the theoretical system for making it it's still horrendously, horrendously expensive so the terrestrial agglomeration terrestrial agglomeration plate tells me that it's this block and then we also need these things to make a multi-block structure a sort of it's, it's another sort of altar type thing that I have to make um, but this is a light magic altar instead of a dark magic altar um, so from that I can then put a mana steel ingot a mana diamond and a mana pearl on it so let's demonstrate this so I can come over here so I need mana steel ingot mana diamond and mana pearl come over to here and if we is this yes this is all set, still set up properly I can then chuck these onto the um, the thing. Okay, there we go. Drop them on there. We get the blue light effect, and and this saps an enormous quantity of mana out. It's currently linked to this tank. So these these things you can see on the top, floating in the air, this little sun thing is called a spark, and that's a way of linking two things together. So you can see this of the particle effects going from one spark to the other spark. That's feeding mana out of this pool at a quite a rate into this system over here and it takes 500,000 um, mana to make one uh, terra steel like that which is why I say it's very very expensive and you'll notice that we've used basically half of the tank so we've used up a lot of mana steel let's put this back in there okay uh, it's used up sorry it's used up a lot of mana in order and, and all of the bits and pieces I put on there in order to make this one terra steel so that's but I have now made a terra steel and I can go over and put it in here so this is also going to be a thing that will need to be automated we'll have a thing where you can um, We'll have another 
precision item dropper, I imagine, over here that will put the things out when it's requesting a terror steal. Now, one thing I've discovered, which is quite nice, is that these um, these interfaces have, have a, a blocking mode where you can have it either ignore the contents of the target inventory or do not push if it still contains items. So basically, this means that when it runs, if you if you requested multiple things, it will only put out the ingredients for one thing at a time. Now, this one is just supposed to be mana soaking stuff that's produced. So that's fine. I can dump as much stuff in here as I want. But this one I've set up as to block. And that means that for each rune it tries to make, it will put the ingredients for one rune into the chest. I then scamper over, do the um, do the magic, come back over here, put it in. And then it goes, aha, that has now been made. I shall put the ingredients for the next one in. Um, or maybe it does it when the chest's empty. I'm not sure. Either way, it, it, either way, it means you can come over. You can grab all the bits for one recipe and then come back and get the bits for the next recipe so, you, so it doesn't fill up your you're not picking up to, the stuff for multiple builds and getting confused over what's what and that'll be very useful for this as well because you need to put down one of each and it then takes quite a long time to make it so you need to wait for that to happen then pull the stuff back out and it'll and then it'll um, and then it'll make the next one ready so that's going to work quite nicely. Now, you might have noticed there aren't any sparks floating over here. That's because I haven't linked this up yet. But at some point, I'll probably remove the spark from here. And so this pool will only be used for um, uh, this for the, for, the, for the runic altar and for people doing things manually. So typically filling up the um, the, man, the uh, band of mana for, from. Because that's that's something that we... Or, or filling up their mana tablets once I've been able to make them for everyone. And I'll fill this up from here and that'll be much much better but that's that's a to come sparks i don't think are too difficult to make because i made them a while back so and things tend to just get, tend to get hard, gradually harder over time or things that you have already made tend to get easier over time so this should be okay and with there being four mana pools around here we should be able to make a significant number of the um of the of the terra steels before it before it runs out so, how am I making mana? How am I making the mana? Well, over here, as I've described before, you can see the um, the the coal dropping out there. All the ender flames are now on fire because they're pulling in the coal, burning it, and creating mana. So that pool is now being filled up again. Granted, it's being filled up relatively slowly, but it is being filled up. Now, in order to get th get things to fill up a bit quicker, I've got this this system over here where let's let's do a little bit of digging and find out what's going on. Okay, so down here, this is another one of the cables coming from the computer system. It's going up to a, a fluid export bus, which is filling up this tank down here. It's a wooden tank, and we're filling it with lava, which makes absolutely no sense, but let's not worry about that. There's then a, an ex, a, a pipe underneath there with an export uh, with a servo on it that's pumping the lava out of that into this fluid placer. This is all being controlled by a redstone system. So we've got a signal coming off here that is basically watching to see when these uh, tanks are full, which is essentially the same as the one we've got over, over here watching for this if, if this tank is full so that's then fed down here into this hole where it's fed into a what's that, is that an, yeah fed into a not gate so we're now saying instead of saying if the tank because these systems work a bit differently over here we're saying if the tank if the tank is full this one turns off it has an almost it almost sort of has a built-in not gate Around here, we're saying if the tank is full, if the tank is not full, carry on passing the signal, it then goes to this NAND gate down here, which look sorry, the NAND gate watches this repeater, which extends the pulses from this timer. So the timer is set to six minutes because it takes five minutes for these thermal lilies to cool down again. So the, every six minutes, this thing will trigger, which the, the, this thing makes the pulse a bit longer, making this then drop two block blocks of lava. Those two blocks of lava go into this hole here, and these two thermal lilies will pick up those blocks of lava and turn them into mana, um, which is, that's, that's what they do. At the moment, they're gently steaming because they're in cooldown mode, because as I said, they only run once every five minutes. If we have a look at them, we'll see that actually there's quite a lot of mana in this one, and that one's absolutely full of mana. It must have run fairly recently. And then this mana splitter here, mana spreader here, sorry, is pulling the mana out of those. You can, you can tell because if I... If you put, oh, well, here we go. If you just point the wand at the at the thermal lily you're interested in, then it will tell you, it will show you, it will highlight the mana spreader it's connected to. So you can see the uh, the grid appear, grid appearing around that one, and then this is connected to that mana splitter over there, which is dividing the mana between these four pools. So every, as I say, every six minutes, which is going to be a little while, um, it's about, it's getting close. We'll keep an eye on that. 
because in a minute or so that will trigger we'll see all of these flash and then we'll get the lava being put in the in the bucket over there so let's try and watch all of that there we go Oops. so that that triggered we've now got red uh, things coming off these because they've um they've they've happened that they are actively full of how do you I don't, I don't know how you um but they, they they had red 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 glowy bits coming off them because they've actually just worked and it's now put some mana, mana into there the mana is being transferred over here into the into the mana pools and you can see they are very gradually filling up when I, when I look at them there's a bit more in there than there was before so this whole system is now is now fully automated and will very gradually produce mana it's still not as fast as we would ideally like but it's a good start it's probably going to produce enough to keep us happy for now the only slight downside of this whole system is that I've made a load of holes in the ground and I can't fill them up any more than that um, because it'll break the redstone connections but never mind I mean for now that's that's okay maybe at some point I'll build a hut around all of this stuff because this is all going to be an automated thing and just try and move everything else a little bit further away so the, the one step of this I haven't talked about yet is how I made these patterns and that's done elsewhere and uh, elsewhere so we'll go over and have, have, a, have a look at that now. so down here in the computer area, we, we have the uh, up here we have the pattern terminal and this is used to program those patterns that I was showing you up, upstairs so for any one of these, for example, like, um, you've got you've got two options on the in the in the uh, pattern terminal. You can either make a crafting pattern where you turn a standard three by three grid of stuff into a pattern, and this will be made actually inside the computer system itself. Alternatively, you can make a processing pattern, and this is one which will be automatically outputted into by, outputted by one of those by one of those interfaces I was showing you earlier into a machine that will do it do the do the crafting for you now in this case the machine was myself but the theory stands so from here we can come in and we can say I want to make a rune of fire for example click the plus button here and it'll move those items over to here but there's a couple of things wrong with this um, so if we have another look at the rune of fire we'll see that we've got one two three four five six items to make that over here we've got seven things showing up because it includes the runic altar because the, 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 the mods aren't properly compatible with each other so for all of these you need to remove the um, the runic altar and then you need to put in the living rock and that's what I've been forgetting to do with every single one of them so I need to come down and reprogram them <clears throat> but once you've done that you can then hit the encode pattern button here it'll, it'll program the pattern like that and I can then take it off and put that into the system wherever I want now, I'm actually going to just leave it there because I want this to be re-encoded with something, something else later by somebody else and that they can reuse that one because I don't need another one of these but that's how it's set up so as I was saying, we've got a, um, a slightly more slightly more complete fluid storage system now. So over this side, we've got the existing stuff that was there before. We've got all of these fluids along here. And then there's, oop, there's a bit of lag there. And then there's also a load of them over on the other side as well, over, over here for more fluid. So this is most of the ones I've been playing with coming over are over here. But the idea is we've got all this space where we can add in as Basically, I was going to say as many as we need. That's not remotely true because eventually these cables start to fill up. At the moment, this one's got um, only got four four used on it. But the one on the other side, we're already using a full 21 of those, which is why another, a second a second system has been started on the other side because this one isn't far off being filled up. And the way we've set this up is we've got um, liquids at the top and gases at the bottom so the idea is if you need a load of this for whatever reason you can come along and you can just clip a, if you don't want to use the, the, the computer system for some reason you can just clip a, a tank onto the bottom of here or onto the top of here and the stuff will go bloop, up into it um, and, 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 and fill up your tank so you've got the right amount so you've got what you, what you need um, that's the theory this one appears to be lava at the bottom for some reason but mostly we've got gases at the bottom like these ones you can tell they're gases because they've risen to the top of the tanks um, water is down here too and then liquids across the top and you can, again you can see they're all at the bottom of the tanks so that's the theory and that's that's why it's set up like that we also went off and did a little bit of um, dungeon dungeoneering so we, we found Pete found a dungeon so we went off and explored it and there was much much chaos and much ridiculousness but I did find myself some some diamond trousers which are uh, fabulous so I put those on um, I've got a diamond helmet as well but I think I might have had that before I do now also have boots of not splatting apparently these are boots with multi jump four which is rather nice so I've taken off my slime boots because now I can jump and jump and jump and jump and if I combine if I fly with the elytra as well 
then there just doesn't seem to be any real limit to how high I can jump with these things. So this is rather useful and to be honest is actually better than the, the, the wand of my people need me that I was using before um, because it doesn't require mana so I can leave the um, the mana ring in the in the chest over here so that people don't get upset with me for taking all the mana supply away. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, so that that's um, that's good fun and uh, make, makes 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 me a bit more mobile, shall we say? So I think that basically covers what I've been up to. Um, next time I want to do a bit more of the automation over here, as I was saying, and I still need to make this whole system a little bit tidier. I have filled in the water pool that was here um, from when we were, when we were trying to use the um, the water the water based flowers because these um, ender flames are much simpler and easier to use. So I've, I've yeah, that's basically left left as is so that I'm, I'm happy with i'm happy with the system as well happy with getting rid of the water flowers because they just they tend to die after a while which it obviously makes sense for balance but um was it was annoying to use them this area i think still needs a bit of a tidy up but i'm not sure exactly what i'm going to do so i'll until i've decided i'm going to leave it as it as is i also still need to try and automate producing more petals although mike did go out and i saw him planting a load by hand so we've now got um, I think it was white ones he was doing, so we've now got loads of those. There are a few that are still a bit, a little bit, we're a little bit short of, but at some point I would like to automate this, but now is not probably not that time. <clears throat> um, this will also need to be hooked up to a draw controller to get this onto the computer system as well. But again, that's a that's a that's a, a job for, for 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 another another episode. I'll spend a load of time messing around with the computer systems as he does, um, including breaking it a couple of times so things stopped working. But he did, but he did fix it afterwards in his defence, so that was nice. I've also put in an emergency snack point here, so if I get really, really hungry, I can come along here and boop the burger off this sign and, and eat it. Um, it was mostly because um, I, I had one of these pieces of cover left over. So you'll notice that down here, these cables and things are all exposed, which looks a bit ugly. Whereas up here, I've covered them over so they don't get rained on, and it all looks a bit nicer. So I need to make a load more of these cover things and put them on put them on everything around here to turn this into a proper pillar but in the meantime I had one left over so I put it there and Tristan decided it looked like a sign so we made it into one. Pete has been continuing with the mystical agriculture so he's been making lots and lots of things out of various essences. I don't know if there's any point in me going over there and having a look but I'm not but because I'm not sure I'll, <clears throat> I'll take you over there and we'll have a look and see if, see what we can find. Whereas it looks like it sounds like things are happening a bit more quickly over here. Um, we've got we've got the row of um, plant automate automated plant harvesting machines over there which will pull out pull all the plants up when they're ready put them into the um into the ducts which will bring them over to here so we're getting lots and lots of these various types of essences being produced now um from all of these essences you can then make stuff so for example there is a recipe for making i needed melons for earlier for the um for one of the one of the um one of the runes and there's a recipe for making melons out of nature essence so you get nine of these put them in the block like that and it makes you some melons so I've, I've set that up we now have an automated melon system um, which I probably should have mentioned earlier actually but it means if I if, if I go into here if I search for melon we've got 29 of them at the moment but if I take all of those out we can still make more melons by magic so it turns them it turns the available it turns the um the nature essence into melons hit start and boom just like that it's made them so we can we can make melons very very easily we've got a similar thing for wheat and and um, hay bales and so on um because all of all of that was required for the oops required for the rune so i success so set that up let's try and try and get out of here slightly more successfully than that there we go and pete has apparently been making lots of things out of this he's made massive quantities of steel massive quantities of wheat and he's balanced his growth accelerators that we showed you i showed you last time across the various different crops to, in order to um in order to try and grow them all a bit more evenly rather than just massively concentrating on the wheat so that makes sense because it means we get lots and lots of things the different stuff we need tristan has been as i said dealing with all of those fluids over there on the in the in the storage system um he says he's added an induction smelter for, uh, and, and things for red alloy so that should help us getting uh, getting lots of the other um other ingredients we're going to need at various points um and a lot of this has been added in the sort of the downstairs area of the um the computer system so right down here in the basement we've got We've got lots of automated crafting going on down here. Um, we we'll put in some more carpenters over here. There's oh goodness knows. There's stuff all over the place. Um, got furnaces and pulverizers here. So this is presumably going to be making um, making metals of some sort. In fact, I can have a look. But if I look in the interfaces, I can see that here we're making um, fluix ducts. We're making sandy glass ducts, pulverized obsidian, obsidianite dust, steel blend, pulverized coal, and crushed quartz. So those will be made in there. This is making. Oh, and this is making advanced processes and basic processes apparently interesting that doesn't seem like a furnace thing to me but maybe it is 
up here we've, we've got all that plate stuff we've talked about plate making before um i don't know where all the things tristan's been doing have, have gone i'm afraid um uh, ooh, there's even more down here oh this is the um this is the energetic infuser no the empowerer sorry so over here you can make um various types of empowered oh ooh, here we go empowered uh, diamantine, amp, nori crystal, restonia, etc., etc. Et um, Al did a video, did talked about this in last in his video last week. So I suggest you go if you want to know more about that, you can go off and have a look at that. Um, cause it may, basically it makes um, okay. So you make so let's, let's see. I'll, I'll quickly summarise it. So you want to make restonia crystal block that requires a block of redstone which goes into this bottomless crate, which so falls out onto the switch here. The, Landing on, landing on the button there fires the laser into it. That makes the empowered whatever block, it Restonia block, it get, that gets picked up and goes back into the system. Over here, we have to make the empowered empowered Restonia crystal block. You need to produce all of those things. They get ditched out, dumped out into the um, in, into this into this chest, and then that there's a system of pipes and or ducts underneath here that distributes those to the all the different to the four different pillars display stands and to the empowerer in the middle and then it can zap up an empowered version of whatever it is as well so that's that's sort of the very quick nutshell tour um al can tell you more about it if you if you want to know more uh where's the lift there's the lift while i'm here actually i forgot to mention that oh yes over here that these these things molecular assemblers are machines which will make um, we will do the crafting, like I was saying with the pattern machine, if you can make it into a 3x3 three three recipe, these are the things that will do the actual building. And so we've got the ME interface here, knows about all these things. Um, if I go over here, I think oh, there's one I did down there, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter which one particular one I look at. But this one, for example, will make a hay bale out of nine wheat. And so you, this will grab the, those, those nine wheat, put it into one of these, any one of these machines that's free. That'll assemble it into a hay bale, it'll go back into the system and Hey, hey, bale presto! You've got your, uh, you've got your hay. A lot of what Tristan was doing was going around, just generally helping people with stuff because he's got a bit, of, he's got a reasonable idea about about quite a lot of the different mods in here because he has played this before and has a bit, has a lot more uh, Minecraft experience than me. So he did quite a lot of sort of, of help, helping people out with that. Um, it looks like Mike has been doing some uh, more decorating. So let's try and get airborne so we can have a look. Um, yes, moving that path, this path over here that I was saying last week was obviously going to have to be moved. So he's he's, he's done a bit of that. So this is now a, a little bit neater, and there's a slightly nicer entrance to the exploding room as well. He's also started doing chemistry stuff. Goodness knows what that's about. I think it's I think it's something to do with our um, our, our periodic table over here. So maybe he's been taking things out and mixing them up to make new stuff. I I don't I I, I actually don't know, but um, he says he's been doing some chemistry. So I think it's probably this. So that's pretty much all I have for you on this episode. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on Monday for the uh, stream and on Wednesday for the Factorio stream, where I shall be continuing with space exploration, where I feel like I'm sort of kind of getting into the end game sort of area of that of that now. Um, there's not a huge amount more of it left, but um, I, th I think. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And of course, we've got the uh, the summary videos coming out at the weekend. Often tr there'll often be a tutorial or something on Fridays, and the GTA videos on Thursdays. And there was a good one this week, so make sure you go back and watch it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is not how you fill up mana pools. <laughs>